Hi, my name is Shady Atia, professor at Liège University in Belgium, and today's presentation is about randomization and blindness within experimental research. Well, today's presentation is a follow-up within an experimental research playlist that was developed. I hope you watch previous videos that will be kind of introduction to today's presentation content. And the audience of today's presentation is mainly postgraduates and scientists who are conducting or seek statistically to design their experiment in the fields of medical sciences, social sciences, life sciences, natural sciences or engineering. And also the presentation is catering for mentors and supervisors. I would like to share with you the common slide that I use about describing the research methods, the quantitative research methods, the qualitative research methods, and the mixed research methods. And today's presentation is within the experimental research methods. Well, the objective of today's presentation is to enhance your knowledge about randomization and blindness when conducting experiment and to help you to avoid bias and increase the internal validity of your research. The content of today's presentation is mainly about randomization, sampling, blindness, biases, and finally the conclusion. Let's start with randomization. According to the definition of randomization, randomization permits use of probability theory to express the likelihood of chance as a source for the differences between outcomes. And why is randomization in this sense important? Because in science, randomized experiments are the experiments that allow the greatest reliability and validity of statistical estimates of treatment effects. So it will allow us to be able to establish a cause and effect relationship with high confidence and all treatments have equal chance of being allotted to different experimental units. Now if I share with you the levels of evidence that we can find that Randomization can have, allow us to have the highest level of evidence. Why is that? Because as you can see in this table, according to the type of study, we can have a high level of confidence in the information that we are sharing or we're using in order to inform our decision making. The lowest level of uh, evidence or confidence regarding our information is expert opinion, which is considered number six, because it, in this sense we are relying on one single person's perspective and views and experience. Then we move up to higher level of evidence until we reach meta-analysis of randomized control trials and systematic reviews of randomized control trials. And we go lower and lower from to individual randomized control trials with narrow confidence interval, systematic reviews of cohort studies, and so on. We move from the cohorts to systematic reviews for case controls and then co uh, single case control studies. So as you can see, the higher you want to reach evidence and confidence in your evidence, you must go with randomization, especially category one and two and B, you see that what distinguishing them is mainly randomization. So here when there's a conflict, when we have uncertainty about a topic, we need to make sure that we are ac accessing information or paper that have meta-analysis with randomized control trial or systematic reviews for results from randomized control trials that are previously published. Now, the first aspect when we talk about randomization, it is the sampling. Well, we need to make sure that, or we need to understand that when we're talking about sampling, we need to study the population, and population is the group of elements or the people or materials or subjects or objects that researcher wants information about. And actually, we will take a sample from this population, which is part of the population that the researcher takes out to examine and draw conclusion from. So therefore, we need to make sure that we have a good sample representing this population. And, representative, and therefore, the representation of the population is important. And each element of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. What happens in reality that when we do sampling, that we do bias sampling. And bias sampling is simply one or more parts of the population that are favored and others are not. As you can see here, the most common sampling um, approach that researchers use that is not randomized is the convenience sampli sampling, which is the elements that are chosen because they are easy to reach depending on the capacity of networking of the investigator. In this sense, we need always to describe our sampling randomness to make sure that we are avoiding these situations. So the goal of sampling is to avoid biased samples, and therefore we seek to look at distribution. We look at simple randomized sampling, the SRS, where each one of these elements has an equal chance of being chosen. 
We look also at stratified random sampling where the population is divided into stratas, groups of similar elements, and with the simple random sampling are performed within each stratum uh, and the simple randomized sampling are then combined to form the sample. So this is also a very uh, recommended approach to make sure that you have a representative sample. Now the second aspect related to the sampling is the sample size. So a large sample size will decrease the likelihood of bias down and randomization will decrease the risk of selection bias overall. So therefore we always have to report in all our publication or in our reports the exact sample size n for each experiment or group condition given as a discrete number and unit of measurement. Now I'd like to move to the second part of the presentation or the third part which is related to the bind blinding. Blinding here is very important because it will allow us to have internal, increase the internal validity of our research so that we can later on can generalize the findings. Blinding is important for ensuring internal validity and reducing observers' bias. And in this sense, double blinding can assure that the behavior and the subjective beliefs are less, li less likely to influence the outcome. And in this sense, we do double blinding to make sure that nobody knows about what kind of intervention, what kind of treatment. And the double blinding is the highest standard of quality to make sure that when you are applying your intervention on your subject, uh, there is no bias, human bias or human error related to the manipulative nature, uh, the potential of any manipulative nature of intervention. Now let's move to the fourth part of today's presentation, biases. What are biases and what type of biases we should avoid when we do uh, randomization in our experiments? First of all, we have the attrition bias. It's a systematic error caused by in equal, uh, unequal loss of participants or subject over the course of your the time of your experiment, especially if the experiments are running on a long term. What happens is that sometimes your participants, they withdraw, or if you are using subjects, uh, for example, the material samples, they will expire. So subjects might withdraw due to the lack of effic efficacy, unsatisfactory treatment, adverse event, or death if the subjects are human beings, and they can also be expired if they are objects or materials. So study authors should clearly state losses and describe how they were dealt with during the experiment. And once you have any uh, variation related to this uh, loss, you have to report it. And this, if not reported, it's considered as the attrition bias. The other type of uh, bias that you need to make sure that you avoid and report about is the contamination bias. When control group has the same results as the treatment group, this can be causing the contamination bias, and the intervention appears ineffective in this, can, in this sense, and the control group received the intervention indirectly. This happens also that if you have a group that uh, is tested on long term and you are doing experimental research, it's possible that the intervention reached your subjects indirectly without your control. So here, this is also contamination bias. Therefore, you have to re-examine the condition of the control group all the time and make sure that there is no contamination bias during experiment. Well, this is the end of today's presentation. Some concluding remarks. Randomizations and blindness are very important. They will reduce your experimental error. They will reduce the impact of disturbance and erroneous factors. And they will distribute the effect of noise factors more evenly in a random way. So this is very important why we should address both uh, um, uh, factors and quality measures. Randomization cannot be used if the sample size is small, hard to measure or diverse results are there, when quick answers are needed, and when there is a low number of units of analysis. So all that is very important to report in your uh, report or in your paper because if you do not describe your randomization, you will have a problem with confidence in your results. And if you cannot have enough number of samples, if it's hard to measure uh, the different results, then you cannot talk here about a randomized study. And once your experiment is not randomized, it will have more limited effect and limited possibility to be circulating as an representing an evidence for the scientific community. So this is very important when you do any uh, research to describe your blinding and describe your randomization to make sure how far is your experiment randomized and how far is the level 
of blindness so that we can say what will be the level of confidence regarding your work. This is the end of today's presentation. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Don't hesitate to share the presentation with any person interested or conducting experimental research. Also, if you want to complete or comment on my presentation, don't hesitate to comment on the video. All your feedback is very valuable. By that, I end today's presentation on randomization and blindness in experimental research. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.